She's called Augusta home for the past 20 years, but a dark and shadowy past followed her here. For two years, from age 14 to 16, she lived as a sex slave. In a News 12 special assignment, Laura Warren gives you a look into the secret world of sex trafficking through the eyes of a survivor. For this survivor, the scars are still too deep for her to show her face, but tonight she is ready to tell you her story. With sex trafficking becoming a growing problem right here at home, she decided it was a story you should hear to let you know this is real and it can happen right next door. Don't let the smile of this 13 year old blonde haired beauty fool you. Behind closed doors, she says life at home with stepfather number two of seven was a living hell. My stepfather had held a loaded gun to my head, to my siblings' head. It was kind of like we were you know, just made to clean up their messes all the time. Her rocky family life came to a head one night in a fight with her mom. It was a night that would change the course of her life forever. I was 14 uh, when she asked me, you know, but she didn't ask me, she told me, you know, you just need to get out. She left home with the clothes on her back, staying at friends' houses until she ran out of excuses for not going home. I was so scared of going back there. I just didn't, I didn't want to go back there. You know, it was just, it was a bad life. In Tampa, their bathrooms and their gas stations are like outside. You don't have to ask anybody for a key. So I just stayed in the bathroom. Bathrooms, park benches, the streets. Wherever she could find a place to sleep, she would. A frightening life for a 14-year-old girl, scared, hungry, and alone. <laughs> across, you know, him, he was just kind of like a, you know, familiar face and someone who was willing to help. You know, I, I saw it as help. And so I just went back to his house and I was willing to stay there. Lured by promises of protection and the father figure that had been missing in her life, she felt she had a new home. You have someone who's giving you meals and providing for just extremely basic needs. And so I don't have anything to give. I don't have a job. And so it was almost like I felt obligated. So she paid her debt with the only thing she felt she had to offer, her body. At a certain point, um, you know, I didn't feel like I was obligated. It was like I didn't feel like I had a choice. Eventually, she was told to have sex with others passed around to different houses. I would kind of hear them talking about money being exchanged. For two years, she lived as a sex slave at the age of 14, passed around like an object. Probably about 100 to 130, 40 people. That's like the first time I ever told anybody that. She realized they weren't locking her in their homes for her protection, but to keep her from leaving. And for two years, she was too afraid to try, too afraid to fail. Sometimes the hell you're in is better than the hell you don't know. But she did know the life she was in was no life at all. Some 20 years later, every detail is clear of the day she'd had enough. I had been beaten like really, really bad. And I just remember like sitting on the bathroom floor and, you know, just like, I just cannot believe like how much longer can this go on? Searching and then saving any forgotten penny she could find on the floor in a couch, Finally, she had enough to make a phone call to her biological father in Augusta. I did not tell him what was going on. I think he felt obligated to come and get me because he had not been a part of my life. Till I was like actually in another state with my dad, I was pretty scared. Scared of who would come after her, scared of having to go back home, scared for the unknown. Now she has a family of her own. Two kids, both too young to hear about their mother's dark past. But one day, she believes she'll tell them. I think of how, you know, the outcome could have been so much worse. She found the strength to speak out, to tell her story for the first time, to let you know this is real and it can happen to the pretty 13-year-old girl down the street. It's not always like in the movies, like what people think. It's not always like there's a pimp, you're standing on the street corner. That's not always what the face of it looks like. Now, to put this problem in perspective for you, there are four risk factors that indicate a city has a problem with sex trafficking. The first one, having any major thoroughfare. The second, hosting a major sporting event. The third, having a migrant community. And the fourth, cities with a population over 200,000. Now, out of those four indicators, our area happens to have all four.
But it's been an invisible problem for so many it years. It has. Law enforcement is really just now starting to take the training in our area and really starting to kind of hammer down on that. We they, we just participated in a nationwide sweep um, for sex trafficking and uh, found some disturbing facts in that sweep. And now Georgia has signs up in a lot of places trying to rescue these people. Right, a trapped. new law just passed in a lot of different places. They're required to post signs, you know, letting the victims know that they can call this number for help if if they need it. Mm. And speaking of that, if you need help or you know something. Someone who's a victim of sex trafficking, you can call this number right here on your screen, 1 888 373 7888. And hopefully someone will. Yes. All right. Thanks for shining a light on an important problem. Absolutely.